Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Aronson, and I have clinical as well as personal experience with TSC. That's because not only am I a dermatologist who manages patients with TSC, I also have TSC myself. Now, I'd like to share my insights with you. In TSC, the number of lesions may vary according to age, developing over a fairly short period of months to a few years. The time of onset tends to occur at fixed periods in life. The earliest lesion detected in TSC is the white macule, otherwise known as the hypomelanotic or lance oval macule. These lesions may become apparent as the child ages. So sometimes they appear after other issues, such as seizures and heart disease. When making a diagnosis, the white macule may be the most interesting dermatologic finding for two reasons. First, there should be more than one. Second, the orientation of these lesions may provide insight. If they're on a limb, they should be along its long axis. They also can be located on the trunk. These macules may need to be viewed with a woods lamp, a long wave ultraviolet light. The classic lesion, the one that's most famous, is the adenoma sebaceum, which is also called facial angiofibroma. These small red or white bumps are predominantly located on the cheeks and can also be seen on the nose, chin, and between the folds of the nose and the upper lip. I've seen onset occur around the age of four and through the late teens and even the early 20s. Periungual and subungual fibromas are hard, non-cancerous, scar-like growths that appear around or under the nail sometimes causing it to split. They usually appear later in life, around ages 20 to 50. Under the microscope, these fibromas look very similar to facial angiofibromas. A recent finding is the appearance of red comets, which are red streaks running the long axis of the nail that don't change with nail growth. They seem to persistently occur there. In fact, after I learned about this finding, I found that I had one. Chagrin patches, named after the Irish word for untanned leather, have a somewhat textured surface. These large, scar-like growths are commonly located on the back. I consider forehead plaque to be essentially the same thing as a chagrin patch, though it's located on the forehead. Notably, it's the one skin finding that may be a marker for a neurologic disorder. In my experience, I believe there's some worsening of the seizures, and I haven't seen any direct correlations with neurologic disease and other skin lesions. Although not a major feature of the disorder, confetti macules can occur in TSC. They are white to slightly white in color and are very tiny. They look like little speckles of white. They're slightly lighter than the normal skin color and tend to occur on the arms. Though in my experience, confetti macules are a difficult feature to use as diagnostic criterion for TSC. Although uncommon, skin tags have also been reported in TSC, especially those occurring on the neck. They tend to cluster in clumps for some reason. 